Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is an old pressure washer I pulled out of the junk pile. This is a gas-powered unit. It's a Generac. It's capable of producing 3,100 PSI. As you can see, the pull start cable is kind of all hoop rigged repaired. That's not good. The air cleaner cover is off. And the spark plug boots just kind of hang out over there. So you need to tear into this thing, figure out what all is wrong with it. Believe it or not, this is actually my own personal pressure washer. I've owned this since it was brand new. I have ended up pulling this cord in two like the second time I used it because the relief valve didn't work. Uh, I didn't do it on purpose. It just tied up and, well, gave way. Uh, last year when I went to winterize it, the float stuck and the cylinder was completely hydraulically locked with fuel. So the whole engine is full of gasoline. Um, when I removed the spark plug to pull it over to push the gas out or the fuel out, hit geysered gas all over the place and actually landed on the wife's car. Wasn't overly happy about that. So this pressure washer has been a good one, but over the last year or so, it's kind of earned a bad reputation. As you can see, I haven't been very nice to it either. Let's get this uh, recoil starter off of there. Try to get a new rope on that first order of business. And then second, we're gonna take this carburetor off, try to get that all cleaned out. Now the trick is getting the new cable wound on here without this thing completely uncoiling on us. I'll uncoil it all the way and then lock it. That ought to do, hopefully. Yeah, now I just need to get this old cable out of there. I have a new one here, Briggs and Stratton one. Uh, I don't even know why I bought this, but hopefully this one will work. Cut this off, thread that new one in there, and knot it up. Should be good to go. Uh oh. That was almost bad. All right, let's see what she's gonna do. Get this old piece out of here. Uh-huh, well, it appears as if it uh, is longer than the old one. I'm not a rope knot tying expert, but what I was trying to do here is make basically a double half inch knot just go around itself two times. I could be completely wrong about the style of knot. And if you have problems with it holding, you can always take your end and meld it to itself. But we should be pretty good. Let's tuck that back in there. All right. That only took like two or three years, and it only, only was like a 15 minute job. Get this carburetor off of here. That cover slides off of there and then the carb slides off of the uh, these two studs sticking out here 
It's like you just have to disconnect the fuel line and then the uh, linkages here. Got our old trusty catch bin here. Use that to catch all that old fuel. It probably needs, not probably, it needs uh, changed anyways. So then we have this little spring wire here and then the governor and this carburetor should just slide right off. Look at that. Nice. If you follow along pretty regularly, you'll know that my workbench is still covered with these hydraulic cylinders from Johnny number no. five. We gotta get these out of here, but we're waiting on seals. We're just gonna work right here in this nice little small corner and tear this carburetor apart. Uh, usually I would dip it, but we're trying to expedite this because we need to use this thing today. Uh, so we're just gonna pull this apart and blast it with uh, the aerosol carb cleaner as good as we can. And hopefully that gets her all fixed up. Definitely focusing on the float to make sure that float is moving and operating freely and the valve doesn't stick, which that will be here in the bottom of the bowl. That stuff's so black, I probably see it in there. It's so black, it looks like oil more than it does uh, fuel. Pull this shaft out, we should be able to remove the float. There's a little rubber needle there on the end. Still trying to get used to all the tools being up there. This guy's pretty crusty. I don't, I don't know if you can see through there with the resolution or not. I mean, it's still open, but it's kind of gummy. It's like the orifice closed up a little bit. Uh, it's pretty crusty in there, so it probably wouldn't run right if we didn't clean that. I don't know how much of this you can see or not, but you can see the green goo and the blackness build up around the float seat. Uh, same stuff that exists down inside this mixture tube, if you will, or this, uh, I always call it a jet or porting, but basically that's where the fuel is sucked up. Get all this cleaned up, uh, and then all these other ports, we'll blast that with carb cleaner and put her back together. Spark plug's been kicking around the workbench probably for almost a year now, or pretty close to it. Let's give her a quick clean off. Doesn't look like it was dropped or smashed too hard anyways. Get started, we'll get it back in there. Tell you what, I'm kinda on the fence of those sockets with the rubber booties. Really hard to get off. Ta-da! Got fresh fuel here. Get her all fueled up with a full tank. Forgot the vent. Let's check the oil here. Yeah, that's not good. That's basically gas oil. It's definitely not the ideal situation. I don't know if you could tell, but she was chock full of fuel just to gushing out of there. And that wasn't really oil anymore. It was more uh, gas oil mixture, mostly gas. I thought for sure that would have evaporated by now. I guess not. I put her all pig mat down here on this wheel. I think what we'll do now is probably dump in a little bit of fresh oil, swish it around a little bit, let it drain out, and then we'll fill her back up with fresh. A little bit of black jazz coming out with that all caught by this awesome pig mat here. We're gonna get our plug back in, top this thing off. All right, now that we got all that nasty skunky oil out of there, we can hook the hose up to this bad boy, 
see if she's gonna run. What do you think? Do you think she's gonna fire? I, I really don't know. I hope so. Uh, but it's been a year since it's ran and was tore apart and flooded full of gas and sitting there. I probably should have cleaned that out or drained that a long time ago. Oops. This is the deck that we built a few years ago and it's really sun faded and weathered looking. It needs to be pressure washed, cleaned, and a good seal coat before the winter months. This was supposed to take place last year, but did not happen. Didn't get it fit in the schedule. The shop foreman's over there yelling at me because I'm taking too long to do this. So let's get this party started. Let's see if that pressure washer is gonna fire up and clean this deck. So I got the hose hooked up. And I always leave the tip out when I'm first trying to start it. That way we get all the air bubbles out, get her free flowing before we try to start it. You will always wanna make sure your power washer is primed and the air is out of it before you try to start it. You don't wanna dry start that pump. Everything's on, here we go. Yeah! All systems were go for launch, but she just keeps shutting down on us, and I think it's a fuel issue. Yeah, so. It's a fuel related issue. The fuel should be on right now and nothing's coming out. All right, I smell like a gas can now. I burnt the piss out of my fingers on the head. Uh, that's okay, feelings, that's overrated. Let's hope she's gonna keep getting fuel when we turn this on and get back to that pressure washing. Good news, bad news. She kept shutting down because she's running out of fuel, but if you look inside, I dismantled that on-off valve 
if you can get the resolution, there's multiple ports and the ports have raised round rubber bosses around them. They're supposed to create the seal. Well, they're all deteriorated and rolled over and wadded up in there. So we need to get a new one of those. But for the time being, I'm gonna try to modify that so it doesn't leak all over, but stays in the on position. So that whole piece actually came out as one big chunk. You can see the raised edges are kind of damaged. I think they're supposed to look something like the backside, something similar to that. So I'm just gonna try to scrape off any loose or damaged things. I might even turn it upside down and uh, see if that helps out the situation. Make sure all that loose wadded up stuff's gone. The carburetor's been off three times now. Uh, the ultimate culprit of it turning off frequently was that on off valve that rubber was damaged in there and it was rolled over on the ports blocking the flow starving it from fuel so it would run a little bit and then it would die out the guy who designed that sheer genius because that rubber plug that's the seal could be flipped over and rotated 180 so those round ports that were damaged those raised o-ring boss faces if you will kind of what it looked like the damaged side are now on the bottom and on the opposing side the other two bosses were not for switching ports but they just kept it from rotating that guy's a genius i think we're good to go let's get this thing going fuel on actually on i don't think we'll need choke maybe we will need choke We did it. We got the whole pressure washer fixed up. We got it running. There's a few headaches along the way. Had the carburetor on and off a few times. Debris from that valve, that on off valve, that uh, disintegrating gasket or seal was floating around in there. By the end of it, I think we got it all worked out really good. We got the whole deck cleaned. 
and it looks great. Luckily, Dad showed up with this tool right here. I have never used one of these before. This is, looks like by Simpson Manufacturing. You hook it in there, it's got your whirly gig here underneath, and it just does an amazing job and makes really quick work of what would have took a very long time. It also takes out all the marks uh, that you would get because it holds the distance away. Now we did get a couple circles here and there trying to do it on the steps, but on flat surfaces, this is awesome. We even got carried away a little bit and did all the sidewalks too. And it just, it, it worked great. If you don't have one of those, I just, I don't know what you're doing because that's the first time I ever used one and I will never do this again without one of those. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button your way out. Thanks for watching everyone.